Welcome to the Hyper Fast Show, where we believe unlimited growth in business and life is created by surrounding yourself with people who have been where you are going. Learning from others allows you to compress time and grow hyper fast. And now, here are your hosts, Kerry Shaw and Dan Lesniak. Kerry and Dan are real estate developers, best-selling authors, billion-dollar agents, and million-dollar agent makers. And now, get ready to grow hyper fast. Hey guys, so I'm Matt Fagioli. I live here in Atlanta. Uh, I've been in real estate for 15 years. Been friends with Nick and Tristan for quite a while. And uh, I'm excited to have the opportunity to share with you. Uh, and what we're going to do, we have a panel discussion with three incredible agents. And I'm an agent too. I have a team here in Atlanta that's all in the back. Say hi, 6, 7, 8 team. <laughs> Woo! So, but my favorite thing to do is to learn, just like you guys, to learn from awesome agents and team leaders who are doing incredible things. And so we have an awesome panel with us. So, hi panel, say hi panel. Hi. Please introduce yourselves, ladies. I'm Lisa Archer, I am the COO of Level Homes. Um, we have expansion teams with Keller Williams and I'm super excited to be here. Awesome. Hey everybody, I'm Carrie Scholl. I'm from the Washington DC market. I have a huge team of 70 people. Uh, last year we did 300 million plus and this year we're gonna double it. Hey y'all, I am Brittany, a fellow Southern Belle. I have been an agent since 2015, team of 10 plus me. I'm an ISA and I'm with Carrie. I'm doubling my, well, tripling my volume this year so there you go yeah nice. and on track to do it boop, boop. awesome awesome all right cool all right so now go back through and let's talk about like how, how long have you been running your team what's your current volume what's your plan for next year you kind of both kind of touch on that a little bit but sort of expand about what your team looks like okay sure Okay, so let's see how long we've been in the business. Mm -hmm. uh, so this will be start of my 15th year, and I am now a coach. And um, so we've got, like I said, we have some expansion teams. Our main first team is in Charlotte, North Carolina, and um, then we have one in Lake Norman, Greenville, South Carolina, uh, Shreveport, and Pensacola, Florida. So that six? Yeah. Six markets? And Seattle. And seven. Yeah, so that's that, and we're going to double our locations this year. Uh, we did 180 units last year, and we're going to triple that this year. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Awesome. Um, you heard me say 300 million. So we did 481 transactions last year. And to talk about the structure a little bit, all of our team is located in the same area in the Washington, D.C. market. Um, when I started the business, I don't know if any of you can relate to this. You can be shy and raise your hand carefully here. How many of you guys don't love prospecting, if you're honest? <laughs> okay. So I didn't. I was really bad at it. So I started out by scaling an ISA department. I hired three ISAs pretty much out of the gate when I only did 21 transactions. To give you perspective, that was in 2010. By 2015, we did 365 transactions. So we had a pretty fast growth curve. Um, and that, I would say, having the ISA department is the core of how we've grown today. Uh, we do, we have a buy side, a list side, and we're scaling a major marketing team. So um, that's pretty much our structure. Um, my structure is probably, I guess, a little bit different from both of y'all's. We have, I have agents, but I didn't specify buyer versus seller. I let them take whatever comes because I was getting pushback. Um, one of the agents is probably transitioning into more of a listing agent. I have had various teams as I've gone. So in 2016, I think I had a team, a version of one. My strongest team started again in August. And so far this year, we're at 36, which is not impressive, but it's not bad. So I'm excited. How I think you were impressed by that. <laughs> <laughs> no, when, when you have friends like who are on the stage, you're like, okay, let me fix this. Let me let, let me let me tweak a little harder. Let me work a little harder. Um, but last year we did close 70 units, being a newer team. Um, 
I've had the, I don't know if y'all have team leaders in the room, I think so, but it's been a struggle for me to find the right people to motivate the proper way. I currently believe that culture beats KPI every time, and that's how I've restructured my team, and it's actually working really well. That's a quote right there. Yeah. Culture beats KPI. Yeah. Hey, look, some humans just suck. Okay. <laughs> it's just a There's fact. another quote for you. Yeah. <laughs> Take it's a that fact. It down. <laughs> You've got to work with people you, you like, know, like, and trust, just, just like your clients. Right, Same thing. Right. So I love what you were talking about. It's like, well, that's not impressive, whatever. Like, whatever level you're at, you, we all want to inspire to be to the next level, right? So, so that's, that's probably a good question to go down here is like, who, who are you looking to that's a level ahead of you that you're trying to model after or that's coaching you or how, you know, anywhere in that realm, Lisa? There's probably a group of people. Um, so I, you know, I get to sit in a mastermind with Gary Keller and just knowing what a visionary he is and the people that I get to surround myself with, um, that's important, you know. If you walk into a room and you're the smartest person in the room, you need to leave immediately and go find a better room. Mm -hmm. Because you're not, you're gonna get, you're not gonna be average to who's in the room. So I'll always be learning. It took me a long time to figure out, you know, people are like, wow, some of these people that travel all the time, how are they getting their work done? But the thing is, is that the, the two things that you got while you were in that room made you a fortune when you went back. Like I've already learned 100%. several things that happened here that if I hadn't have shown up, they would never have happened, and they're critical, big potential things. Absolutely. You know, so you got to balance it. But anyway, all right. So, so next, same question: Who are you looking up to? Where are you trying to go from here? So I'm a big believer in masterminds. Also, um, the other thing that I've done to elevate my business and my vision in the last year is surround myself with leaders like Grant Cardone, Gary Vandercheck, Billy Jean. So I'm looking at who's the best in the world at specific skill sets and then putting myself in the room with those people. Because for me, it's not about just following another real estate agent. There isn't really a lot of agents who have done more volume than I've done or built a bigger team. It's about, okay, how do we bring what's brilliant from outside the industry in? Mm, nice. I'm going to piggyback off of all three of y'all, actually. Um, the masterminds have been the the biggest thing for me. I was lucky in that I joined Lab Code Agents in 2015 when there were 2,000 agents. So I was able to become close to Tristan and Nick and able to just call and say, hey, I, I need help. Hey, you know, I don't know how to do this. Um, Tristan once told me, because I said, you know, Tristan, I'm nothing special. I'll just copy off of y'all. And the, the difference is I actually implement every single thing I do. So every time I come from a conference, y'all will see me taking notes or taking pictures. I don't just take those pictures. I actually put that into place. So um, implementation is the biggest key. Right now, I'm going to go get a pink legal pad because that was brilliant because I scroll all over the place, too. I probably just scrolled in. So there you go. <laughs> I'm taking you one right now. <laughs> All right, so we were talking about you know, questions that we wanted to talk about and things like that. And my favorite one was, uh, what would you tell your rookie self oh, yeah. when, when you first started? That's but I want to make it two parts, OK? Because okay. when you first started in real estate, you were just a, a rookie rookie, zero transactions. And then also, when you started, you were team. So what would you tell your rookie self? And what would you tell yourself the day you started your team? OK, so I am actually a weirdo. I do like lead generation. Because I don't call it that, and you know this, like I hate the word lead, we use the word opportunity, I call it opportunity generation because every single person that you ever meet in life is an opportunity. And it may not be in real estate, it may just be an opportunity to form a relationship and to know, knowing that now um, is what I would 100% make sure that my rookie self know, knew that um, never take the foot off of opportunity generation, and that every single person that you meet is an opportunity for some sort of relationship in the future. That's awesome. And um, the second thing would be, when you think about it like that and you look at everything as an opportunity, you're going to put yourself in the right place at the right time to meet the right person for the right reason. So just... Well, and, and back to that conference thing or whatever, it's like every room you're in, everybody, every single person that you meet, whatever room you're in. One of my favorite stories was, I had a guy speaking at my conference, he texted me and he said, I just got in a car accident, I'm okay, I'm gonna be there, but I'm gonna be late. And I was like, oh man, that sucks, I'm really sorry. He texted me back and he said, it's awesome, because I'm gonna sell a house to the cop and I'm gonna sell a house to the tow truck driver. <laughs> and, and it's funny, but that's it. If you walk out into the world with that, 
Yep. That's how you find opportunities, right? Go ahead, Carrie. I love it. Um, so my biggest piece of advice to my rookie self would have been get in rooms like this faster and make sure you take the time to do it once a quarter. There were times, and that's at a minimum, by the way, once a quarter, because what you're doing is separating yourself from your business and taking a moment to plan and create a vision. So if I didn't sit in rooms like this and focus, and by the way, already today, just being here, I have learned so much. I, I just, it blows my mind, right? Every time I'm in a room like this, and whether it's a conversation at break with one of you that changes the way I'm thinking about something, that can change the trajectory of my career, my team's careers, and our lives, right? So if you take the time to really create your vision and get convicted to it, most of the time for me, the biggest shifts have been in conversations where I've realized, wow, I can just copy this. I can just do what someone else is doing and execute, and all of a sudden the world is gonna expand for me. Um, when I started a team, the biggest thing I would say is be very careful who you surround yourself with because the mindset that those around you have will impact you, right? So if you sense negativity in someone, I don't care how many transactions they're doing, get them the hell out of your office fast. Amen. It's not worth it, right? They will be a toxic energy and not someone who brings you up. I would rather train someone and bring them along that's really positive and hardworking than have somebody who thinks they're the mm -hmm. shiznit and is <laughs> going to suck the life out of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For me, I, um, if I went back to 2015, what I would tell myself is that I could have grown faster, um, quicker, had I known to mastermind, had I known to hire a coach. I hired a coach 13 months later. I think I, my production went from 19 to 52 solo just by hiring a coach, right? Um, I wish I would have done made those moves quicker and known that there was really no limit. I mean, Carrie's did 300 million. There is no limit in what we can do in real estate. Instead, we're setting limits on ourselves within our market saying, okay, this person did 200 transactions, I'll do 250. I don't want to do 250 anymore. I, it's way bigger than that for me now. Um, going back for my team, what I wish I would have done was follow my gut, follow my heart. I'm a very caring person. I really like people. I don't like to fire people at all. Um, that's going to sound surprising because I have fired 35. <laughs> um, but from now on, uh, I lead with culture again. And I know that's going to sound really weird that I keep saying culture, but my team is very strong now. They're executing. They're working. They're, like, super excited. Uh, yesterday, one of my team members got sick. She put in the group me, hey, you know, I'm sick. Can anybody show? Four people. Yeah, I can take it for you. They're not expecting any kind of compensation. They do it because we're a team. We're a family. So that's been the best part about it. That's Huge. awesome. Huge. Okay, so more about team. So I want, to, I want to take you guys through a little production for uh, per, uh, progression for everybody in here. So if you're an individual agent and you're doing 20 million and you're going to go to the next level, what does that look like? If you if you were coaching somebody at 20 million, what would you tell them to do next? Oh, I'd make okay. So I'm, if I'm coaching them, they have a coach. You have to have a coach. Like every professional athlete that ever goes to the next level has a coach. As soon and as you can pay, as soon as you can pay the bills. Well, and coach, I, I, I would right? say I would invest in a coach even before you can. I'd figure out yeah. some other way to get rid of something that you're paying for to hire a coach. Even if you have to do like a less group direct, coaching direct or TV something. Direct TV is the first 200 bucks. Yes. Right? Get, so get rid of direct TV and hire a coach. Um, and it's all about the people. It's about who you're, who you're in business with because who you're in business with matters. If I can't go have a drink with them or if I'm in town, if we're in business together um, and I can't go stay at their house, like we're, that's the problem. I can't be in business with them. I have to be able to drink and stay at their house. It, that's a prerequisite. Um, <laughs> That's it's true. Really it's interesting. like family. I, I didn't know that about you, Lisa. So Sarah, you can come. <laughs> I definitely need you to come work with us. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but I did say with Sarah last night. Um, your relationships really do matter. They they do. They're the biggest thing in your business. And um, to going from 20 to the next level, it's all about who you surround yourself with, 100. percent And if if they don't do lead generation or opportunity generation like you do, if they don't believe in the way that you do it and your systems and your models run. It is never going to work. You cannot fit. They will never fit into your system. Okay? Hear me now. You will always butt heads. Then it will come back to commission splits. And if we are having that conversation in the beginning, run. Mm -hmm. Okay? 
That's right. They've got to be, they've got to look at opportunity too, and they've got to look at trajectory, and they've got to look at your path, you know, what, what you've done and what you've built, and know that your systems and models, not that I'm not willing to hear something new, because we innovate all the time, don't get me wrong, yet if they're not willing to do it the way that we do, it's never going to work. You're always going to be butting heads. So, Carrie, we're 20 million. We'll go to 20 million. So, let me ask you guys a question. How many transactions is 20 million in this marketplace to give me perspective? 80. 80 to 100. Oh, sorry. Okay, all, all right. We, all have some, OTP we have some people, debate going on here. <laughs> uh, yeah, so 50. So, inside 60. the perimeter of, of where we are, 40 yeah. transactions? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. let's imagine we're saying 50. 40 to we're 80. going 50. Yeah. So the reason that I care about transactions is because I care about systems and process. So volume to me, how I would coach you depends on how many transactions you're doing, not necessarily the volume. Does that make sense? Okay, so if you're doing 50 transactions, I would hope that you already have an assistant. Do me a favor, how many of you guys in the room already have an assistant or a partner in the business? Raise your hand. Awesome, okay. So the first thing that I address is what stops us in going to the next level of hiring. Because I believe that having quality people that we surround ourselves with gives us leverage. So there's two points of leverage, people and technology. You guys with me? So if you're at 50 transactions and you feel like your work-life balance is getting out of whack, can anyone relate? You're missing out on family time, you're missing out on time with your friends, doing things that matter to you, to, and with the relationships that matter to you, because your business has taken over your life? Who's been there? Okay. Some of you are not raising your hands, and I think you're lying. <laughs> Who has never had business take over your life? Raise your hand. Now nobody. See how that works? I'm calling, the, I'm calling you all out. Um, so everybody has been in that situation, right? And to me, there's two mindset issues. This isn't about the business coaching. It's actually about where you get stuck in your mind, okay? So the first issue is money. How many of you all had a weird relationship with money growing up? There was scarcity. You didn't have enough. So when you go to hire someone, what do you do? You freeze up. You think, can I really afford this? Is it really going to pay off? And you think of it like an expense instead of an investment in yourself and your business and your time. Okay? So that's the first thing I would deal with. I would find out your relationship to money. Second thing I would deal with, your relationship to freedom. This is what held me back. So I always wanted to have complete flexibility over how I spent my time, and at first I thought a team would prevent me from having that flexibility. I was wrong. By having a team, I go on maternity leave, this is my third baby, for five to six months. On average, I vacation for three to four months a year. A lot of those vacations include real estate conferences, but I have a lot of flexibility with my time. Okay, so I would work on those two things and help you grow. So my average price point is different than y'all's. I was curious to hear how that was looking because my average price point is like 150 to 200. So in order for me to get to the 20 million red, uh, what is that, 100 units? So how many people in here don't have this weird high average price point? Okay, let's talk. So, so I would go from... Um, the difference between 10 million, which was weird for me because I did that my first year with my weird average price point, is working harder. I hired an assistant at first. Then I started the automation. So I'm a huge automation believer because it's very inexpensive to get some of these systems for 50 bucks a month, 150 bucks a month, 300 a month. That's cheaper than hiring an ISA. So go there. I'm trying to say this word. I almost cursed. Uh, Pimp out the system. How about that? Uh, pimp out the system with your automation. Make it work for you. Then bring in the ISA when it's starting to give you a return. So I never put a dollar in until my other systems are paying for itself and giving me enough money. But I'm a huge believer in when I have a check, put that money back into the business because it grows tenfold, a hundredfold, however many folds you need it to go. So. Cool. All right. So last question. And I want to kind of stay in the same vein, but kind of go up to, uh, maybe not to the current level that you're at, but a level up from 20 million. So you're, you're, you've made those steps, you're running a team, you've got an assistant, you've got buyer's agents, well, you're, you're running a business, right? And you guys all think about it that way. What's 
the thing, the one thing that has gotten you to where you are? You know, if you had to pick one thing, what's the one thing that's been the key to your success as you've grown? Well, mine is, it's, um, it's travel, and it's teaching, and it's speaking, and it's masterminds. It's being where, you know, taking those opportunities um, that present themselves and being in the right place at the right time with the right people. And we, we get, we, I mean, we get the amount of referrals we get on a monthly basis um, is a lot, is actually more than mo most agents do in transactions wow. a year. Um, so, it, and that's, I've been building it for 15 years. Like, you know what that looks like. And um, so for us, that is the biggest one is that I am not in the office um, meddling with what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They actually get nervous when I'm in the office more than a couple days at a time. Mm -hmm. And they're like, when are you leaving again? Mm -hmm. um, so it's good. Um, and just, just having that, making sure it's, you've got the right, the right relationships, the coaching, and just making sure the systems and models are able to scale. I don't care if something breaks, we wanna be able to fix it fast. Mm -hmm. there, we can, you know, and I like people who um, wanna make the systems better if you're going to come to me with, with some problems, I definitely want you to come with two or three solutions as well. Mm -hmm. And they, my, our agents know that. Our admin know that. Um, they can bring me anything. They don't usually bring me a ton because they know I've probably seen it prior. Um, but when they do, it's a big deal, and it's usually something we're going to look at. We're going to demo. We're going to see if it fits into our business model. And um, just always think about it. You just said it. Like, you got to think about it as a business. This is your business. And especially if you're going to leave today and start tomorrow looking at your business as a business, know that it's going to take some time and that you need to spend time with it, looking at it, looking at the numbers, because your numbers are telling you a story. Don't ignore that story. Mm -hmm. On the note of numbers telling you a story, um, I believe that in order to grow and scale a business, leads are the core. So I said I don't like prospecting, which means me calling out to people who don't necessarily want to hear from me. Although my team does do that and they do it really well, that's what I would call a pillar of success. So I believe you have to create different pillars of success with lead generation and once you get them working really well and you fine tune them, you put a, a fence around that. You figure out how to maintain that and add more. So we have over 200 lead sources at this point and I think in order to be a team leader that offers continual value, and some people in this room are not gonna like me saying it, but I'm gonna say it anyway, leads equals control, right? If you coach somebody up and you don't provide leads, why will they stay? Loyalty is a bad reason in my opinion. It has to be more than that. You have to be able to put money in their pocket, and the only way you're gonna do that is if you figure out lead generation and you get really, really good at it, and that's the value you provide and you provide coaching. So, hey, before you leave that, I want that, you hit on something I want to touch. I've, I've never had anybody tell me they had 200 lead sources. And I want to talk about that for just a split second. But what I do believe that everybody would agree with up here is that the way to grow from whatever level to the next level is more lead sources, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's something that I think people, for the most part, don't understand and need to, to hear is you want to grow? get two more lead sources, do, you know, but you also have the system to do that with it, right? Right. How the heck did you get to 200 lead sources? <laughs> I'm a psychopath. Um, so here's the deal, guys. I have, within Facebook, I have multiple lead sources, right? I'm not somebody who chunks all my lead sources together and goes, oh, goody, Zillow's working, mm -hmm. right? Within Zillow, there's people who are responding to my listings that's a separate source because whether I paid for Zillow or not, I would get those responses to my listings. Are you guys with me? Um, and a hack on that, if you put in the notes that they need to call the listing agent directly, which you have to kind of circumvent the system a little bit, you're going to get more leads. Okay? So we're, we're split testing everything that we're doing, and I am studying in the ROI the lead sources based on where the actual lead originated and where I spent that money. I'm not a numbers person, but I have become obsessed because that's what leads to growth. If you're just looking at things in a chunk, the problem is you're gonna invest money in the wrong things. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome. So even Homelight, how many of you guys know what Homelight is? 
Okay, so I have separate sources for Homelight because now they have investor opportunities where you can actually buy the property and they have listing opportunities. That's two sources, that's not the same. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so Brittany, so what's the one thing, key to your success? Don't be afraid to fail. How do you like that? Mm. Um, I have failed many, 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 many times, unfortunately for me. Um, and each time I failed, I've come out stronger, better, and actually, honestly, able to move faster because I can take my failure and look at it and say, okay, I'm never going to do that again, but also look back and say, how did that happen? What did you mess up? How do you fix this? Um, to go from, I think I have, I've heard her, she did 100 units in January, right? I was like, Man, I set my goal too small for January. So, so to look at that, and for me, I take that as a failure, right? I look and I say, okay, you didn't do enough. You didn't hit enough. Take, check, move on. So I think a lot of people hear me beating myself up. This is not me beating myself up, right? I am a very positive person. I'm also very reflective on every single thing I do. I don't think I've made a move in a year and a half that I hadn't pre-planned beforehand. Check, double check, call everybody probably that's with panelists today uh, to make sure I'm, I'm making the right move this time and it's been pretty amazing. Awesome. So there you go. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Hyper Fat Show. Subscribe to us if you want to make sure you get the latest and greatest Hyper Fat Shows. And remember, we love reviews. Reviews help us bring better and better guests and improve our shows and give us the good, the bad, and the ugly. We hope you enjoyed the show and we will see you next time.